Apology, host of My Journey with Apology on WATC TV 57 Atlanta, <laughs> along with Kennedy. Hello. Prime this morning. We are so glad that you all have joined us here. Yes. We have a fabulous, fantastic service this morning. We've got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. But before we get started, I see we have a member of our financial <laughs> empowerment yes. conference that is here that he's going to come and share with us. Yes. <laughs> in order so please make sure you come out next weekend to the financial empowerment conference also today we've got we've got a lot on our program today that we want to make sure that we share with you so Kennedy, yes. do you have a couple things you want to share with the audience today yes well one our young adults ministry is actually kicking off there are bible study series that's going to be starting wednesday this wednesday at turner chapel and it will be led by our executive pastor reverend don so if you're a young adult 18 to 25 years old please come out and join us we are kicking off our series this week so be sure to come out and support us also we have um spring production coming back spring this year this yes oh yes and we have miss Denise fraser turner <laughs> to join us looking beautiful in her african attire how are you doing today i am great i'm great i'm excited the comeback show is coming march 25th and 26th and marietta middle school not at the high school where we've been for the last few years but at the middle school at 121 wind street we've been there before so we expect and welcome everyone to come back and join us we love that and if you can describe this production in one word what would it be uh, i would have to say relatable somebody has been at every point that we are going to touch in this production and it also offers a mes message of inclusion so we want to celebrate honor and make others aware of people with various abilities so uh, we're excited to um, offer this message and just offer hope and real life strategies for getting through when you feel like you're at the end of the rope what do you do 10 can promises come see us love that we can't wait and we'll be sitting in the audience supporting Thank you so much. worship yeah. arts here we are, we are so excited. <laughs> Production here at Turner Chapel. Yes. It's an annual event. So you want to make sure that you're there. You can go to the website, turnerchapelamy.org, for more information. We also have a Black History program today, mm -hmm. a presentation. It is entitled One Day, and it is the creation of Maxine Wright and Tinker Foster. So we want to make sure that you all stay tuned in for the presentation, our Black History presentation today one day as we celebrate our history, our rich history. And mm -hmm. you can see behind us the display here. Um, you can see the display behind us, Black History. We've got a lot of displays. So please make sure that you stay tuned in. Also, yes, OK. Technical. <laughs> also, we what else do we have going on? We had to write it down. We've got so much going on. Our 18th anniversary here in the cathedral it will be 18 years yes. that we've been here at this cathedral in this building so we are celebrating that in this coming march and also our church anniversary march 18th is our church anniversary here at turner chapel turner chapel's been here for a minute yes it has i've been here myself <laughs> so i've been here for a minute as well <laughs> and we've got a rich rich history so we are so blessed and we just thank God so much for all that he has done for Turner Chapel and I want to make sure that you all like you share you subscribe Turner Chapel AME Church right here in Marietta Georgia and 
those of you who are watching virtually and are outside of the uh, Marietta area, put in the chat and let us know where you're tuning in from, where you're viewing us from, because we want to make sure that we reach out to each and every one of you and, and, and show you some love. So thank you so much. Now, what else do we have going on? Uh, we also have our Easter fun run and fun day coming up. It's going to be taking place April 8, 2023 here at Turner Chapel. Something for the kids to come out and enjoy for our Easter Sunday celebration that will be taking place the following day on Sunday. So if you have kids, if you want to volunteer and help us out, be sure to contact Miss Virginia Sanders, and she'll be able to give you some information, but that's also coming up soon, so that's very exciting. We've got something for everyone, and our young people, our youth services are the first and fourth Sunday, the first Sunday in the chapel, the fourth Sunday, our youth, which is today, our fourth Sunday, are meeting us in the sanctuary. So, you know, we've got something for everyone, from the little itty bitty babies on up to the silver seniors. There is something here for everyone at four, 92 North Marietta Parkway, Marietta, Georgia. What? Turner Chapel AME Church. And we want to give our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Taruwe Richard Allen Bright, a shout out. He is in Liberia at the moment. Yeah. So, Pastor, if you're tuning in, hey, good morning, Pastor. Yeah, right. Or good afternoon or good evening or whatever time it may be because, you know, right. the time difference and so forth. So. <laughs> So we want to give him some love as well as our first family, first lady, Rita Bright, and our the two ch lovely children, Taruwe Jr. and Tarita. Yes. yes, both college students. Time is going by fast. I know. The years go by. But you know what? This is the place where you can just, from a, like I said, from a little itty-bitty baby all the way up, there's something here for everyone, and we can all grow while we are growing in our, our gifts, our growing in our talents, exactly. and, and doing what God has called us to do. Exactly. And you're kind of, you, Miss Lady right here, let me tell you, this young lady right here, I have watched her progress, and I have watched her grow right here at Turner Chapel, and... <laughs> I'm just so proud of her right here. We're going to get all Thank emotional. It has been a, it's been a, been a journey. It has been, but being here, I have found my church family. I have mm -hmm. found my sisters, my tribe when it comes to dancing. And we just have formed lasting relationships that last a lifetime. So I'm thankful yes. for Turner Chapel. I'm thankful for all the experiences, lessons from Rites of Passage to the joys to dancing to college tour and so here I am post-grad and yeah. in the house of Look the at Lord that. Yet, yet again with you. That's a testimony right there <laughs> yes. ladies and gentlemen a testimony right there of of just what it means to be a member of Turner Chapel here in Marietta, Georgia. It's just a beautiful place to be, and we encourage each and every one of you that are in the Marietta area to please, please come out and join us Sunday mornings, 9.30 a.m., 492 North Marietta Parkway, right here in Marietta, Georgia. And for those of you who are outside of the Marietta area, we invite you to tune in each and every Sunday at 930. And make sure that you like, you share, you subscribe to Turner Chapel Amy. You can hear the music, a mighty music ministry. Oh, gosh. If you if you are looking for some place to worship, to hear a good word and some good, good Quit stomping music. And some good people. And some good people right here. Yes. And we have another guest this morning. We have a guest. <laughs> Come on over, guest. Good How are you? I'm good morning. Well, thank you. Talk to the people. <clears throat> good morning. Um, my name is Kelly Watson, and I am over the Girl Scout Ministry here at Turner Chapel. Um, we are actually one of the largest, if not the largest, troop in the Marietta area. We service girls from kindergarten through senior and high school. And this morning, we are recognizing two of our very own uh, Gold Award Girl Scouts. So that's the highest honor that you can achieve as a scout. Well, congratulations to those two young ladies. I told you all there's something for everyone and this beautiful young lady right here over our Girl Scouts. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing with us this morning. Thank you so much. God bless you. Our Girl Scouts are doing some amazing things. Our Boy Scouts are doing some amazing things. There are some amazing things happening right here. Where? At Turner Chapel, Langley Church, baby. 
492 North Marietta Parkway, the place to be on Sunday morning to get your praise on, to get your worship on. Celebrate life. And to celebrate life. Indeed, indeed, yes. So what else do we have happening here? We've got our spring production, our anniversary, our fun day, the youth services, our Easter, we mentioned our Easter activities. We've got our Easter activities. We've got a lot going on on as well. And once again, our presentation today that is celebrating black history entitled One Day. We have a wonderful display back here. If y'all, can y'all see that? We have a wonderful display back here. And we also have this morning with us, I believe, our first lady. She is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Please welcome our first lady. Yes. How are you, first lady? Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be in church. Love you all. Happy birthday to my husband, yes. the Reverend Dr. Tayue Richard Allen Bright. Thank you, Turner Chapel family. I love you all and enjoy the service. Thank you, first lady. Thank you so much for being with us. You look absolutely fabulous this morning. <laughs> Our first lady, Rita Bright, just a beautiful, beautiful first lady. I'm telling y'all, if you all do not have a church home, what are you waiting for? 492 North, North Marietta Parkway, Marietta, Georgia, right here in Marietta. Isn't that right? Exactly. Like I said, there's something for everybody. If you like dancing, if you enjoy speaking, if you enjoy leading, there's something for you here at Turner Chapel. So come visit us. Come to a service. Come, come to Spring Production. Like, spring production. You all have got to come to spring production. Yes. Yes. So yes. You got to make sure you like, you share, you subscribe. Interact in the chat. Interact in the chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And now we are headed to the service for prayer. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are headed to the service. Father God, we just come with, uh, your, in your son's name, Lord, to give all praise, honor, and glory, Father. We just come thanking you, God, for your many blessings. We come thanking you, God, for, Lord, just allowing us to see another day, Lord. Not just allowing us, Lord, but just blessing us to see another day, Lord, because we know there are those that did not, Lord, answer the alarm this morning. Those that did not walk over into this day, Lord. And so, God, we just take this time to acknowledge and to give you the praise and the honor and the glory, God. We thank you, God, for this time of praise and worship that we can come together. Lord, whether, whether we be in this building or whether we are streaming virtually, Father, but to set this time aside, Lord, to concentrate on you, to give praise, to worship, and to acknowledge you as our Lord and Savior, Father God, as the God of all, God. We just thank you, God, for taking us through another week, Lord. We thank you, God, for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for, God, waking us up and giving us the clarity of our mind, the strength of our bodies, Lord. We thank you for the homes that we live in, the clothes that we put on our back, Lord, the food that we eat, the jobs and the cars that we drive, all those things, God. But we know it's not us, Lord. We know it's all God. And Lord, we just give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory, Father God. Lord, we just ask, Lord, we know that you are here in the moment, Lord, but God, we just ask 
that, Lord, we just set aside everything, every thought, Lord, and just concentrate on you and focus on you to give you praise and worship you, not just in this day, but, Lord, throughout, God, throughout our day and throughout our week, Father God. We thank you for this time, Lord, of February, Lord, where we celebrate our black history, Father God. But we don't celebrate it just during the month of February, but, Lord, every, each and every day, Father God, we are doing great and, and magnificent things, Father God. Lord, and even though sometimes those in, who try to set us down and set us into us uh, just uh, a month or so, Lord, we have come so far, Lord, and we just get, continue to give you bla uh, praise and give you all the glory and give you all the honor for what you've done, Lord. Those whose names were in the, the limelight and those who God was behind the scene, who struggled and fought and, and were in jail and in prison and suffered, Lord, we lift all of them. We give praise and honor to all those who made the sacrifice so that we could do the things that we do today, Lord. And we just give you the praise. And we know the battle is not over, Lord, but we know it's in your hand, Lord. So we continue to lift you up. We continue to guide us and direct us and keep us, Lord, and keep our eyes on you, Father, not on the things of the world, but keep our eyes on you. Now, Father God, we ask that you would be with us, Lord. Be with the speaker this morning, Reverend Graham, Lord. We just lift her up, Lord, that you would use her in a mighty way to glorify your name, Father God. Lord, just, just, Lord, let her be, just, Lord, just let the word and your spirit just, God, just flow from her like God from honey, Lord, from the honeycomb. Lord, we just ask that you would continue to bless this church, Lord. Lord, we continue to ask you to keep our servant leader, Lord, as he is in the homeland, Lord, him and others, Lord. Put your arms around them, protect them, and guide them, Lord, and be with them, Lord, as they are on their journey back and continue to keep them, Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you would just bless this church, Lord. Lord, continue to guide us. Lord, bless us spiritually, Lord, where we can grow in hunger for you. Bless us physically, Lord, where souls will continue to be saved. Lord, not just join the church, but know you as their Lord and Savior and personal Savior. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us financially so we can continue to do the ministry that you've called us to do. Lord, we'll be mindful to give you praise. Now, Lord, whatever that may be a need today in someone's life, whether it's spiritually, whether it's physically healing, whether it's in their home, in their marriage, in their family, God, whatever on their job, whatever the situation may be, let them know, God, that you are God who can do all. You are the I am that I am. And so, Lord, whatever the situation is, we know we serve a God who is mighty and can handle any and every situation. Now, Father... We give you the praise, we give you the honor, and Lord, we just turn it over to you to do your mighty work. And we ask this prayer in the mighty name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Over to see my Lord, I'll get away. Jo 
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This morning, as we continue in the celebration of our cultural heritage, let us now travel over to South Africa. Everyone repeat after me. Show Shaloza. Come on, repeat after me. Show Shaloza. Show Shaloza. is an African traditional song. Its significance has changed over time, but the meaning has stayed the same. This song has inspired several communities to unify under very different circumstances. It has helped people through many times of struggle and is now sung in celebration of South Africa's national unity. Shoshalosha began as a folk song for the gold and the diamond miners traveling back and forth between Zimbabwe and South Africa. The word Shoshalosha means to push forward endeavor or strive. Look at someone and say, push forward, endeavor, strive. The sound of the word itself is symbolic of the steam engine trains that carried miners through the mountains. It is said that the song helped to lessen the workload and to help create a rhythm to work through the long and hard days. Today, this song is still used and even considered by some to be South Africa's second national anthem. It has been the national sporting anthem of South Africa since Nelson Mandela's presidency. Look at someone and say, Shoshaloza, Shoshaloza. Come on, join in with us, join in with us. Let's do call and response this morning, come on. Shoshaloza, Shoshaloza. When you yabale in Kule, Kule, Kutaba, Stimela, Pume, South, when you yabale, when you yabale in Kule, Kule, Kutaba, Stimela, Pume, South, Shoshaloza, 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 in Kule, Kule, Kutaba, Stimela, Pume, South, when you yabale, when you yabale, in Kule, Kule, Kutaba, Stimela, Pume, Salta, when you yabale, when you yabale, in Kule, Kule, Kutaba, Stimela, Pume, Salta, the next part goes like. Kule bom bom kule bom bom kule bom bom kule bom all the tenors do this kule bom bom kule bom bom kule bom bom kule bom let's do two parts here kule bom bom Kule bom, bom, 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 kule bom, kule bom, bom, kule bom, kule bom, bom, kule bom, bom, kule bom. Come on, one more time. Kule In Kule, Kule, Stimela, Sepume, South, when you yabale, go, when you yabale, in Kule, Kule, Stimela, Sepume, South, when you yabale, go, in Kule. 
My son is still alive. Harry, hand me that pail of water and that rag. Yes, Miss Ruth. Yes, sir, Mr. Holtzie. You can't have my boy. No, sir. We's gonna be free from here. I seen it in my dreams, and my dreams be real. I see a woman leading us to freedom. I seen a war, and I was fighting in that war for those that got left behind. I seen a man walking, and a lot of people walking with him. I seen a woman sitting on a big iron machine, rolling down the road. I seen a woman reading from a book, telling stories. I seen a man sliding backwards on the floor. I seen a man standing in a box with gloves on. I seen a man with a coat with shiny buttons and the white man respect him. I see the white man respect him. I see the man sit behind a desk in a wide big house. I see so much, I can't remember it all. But all I know is, is we's going to be free. And I ain't never take my crown, no sir. No sir. Now, that, that's some kind of dream you, you had there, George. Now, one day, I know that one day, this is all going to be over. Old master's plantation going to get burned to the ground. And we's going to dance and shout all over this land. Yes, sir. One I'm day. I'm not going to stop till I'm free. And if they kill me, my soul will be free. No, son. They ain't going to kill you. Because they got to kill me first. Boy, I'll give my life for you. Boy, we's going to be free. I see us not hanging from that damn tree. And I see that woman with a gun leading us to freedom. I met a man. Met him on the road. 
he's from our native land. He, he tells me about who we was before we came here on this, uh, this big old boat. What happened to him? He get away. He jump in the water and go onto a big old log. I almost get away. But when I jump in the water, the, the dog bite me on my leg. And I can hit the head with a gun. You was lucky, boy. Old master, he might forget one day how you saved his daughter from them wild dogs. Mm, God knows our troubles and he knows our pains. I, I, I was on my knees every night. I, I know he hear me. I was tired and I was tried. I was born on this here plantation. I watched my mama work herself to death. She got sick, overseer, wouldn't even let her heal. Didn't stop, just made us keep right on working. Sometimes they treat us worse than them wild dogs that almost killed Miss Abigail. I was tired more than you, Miss Ruth. It don't matter what we do. It, it, it ain't good enough. I know Mr. George telling the truth about his dream. I was gonna run, I was gonna run and come back for all of you. God told me, he said, Harriet, you was gonna lead your people to freedom. And I sure believe well enough to follow no matter where he lead me. I know, I know God is planning something and I am ready for his plan. Even some white folks gonna help us get free. And when it's time, he gonna let me know. No matter how hard you try, you can't kill the man inside. No matter how hard you try, this too shall pass us by. No matter how hard you try, you can't kill the spirit inside. One day we'll be gone. This land ain't our home. One day we'll be gone. This land ain't our home. Oh, one day we'll be gone. This land ain't our home. One day we'll be gone. This land <laughs> ain't, ain't our Change. 
changing hand. Oh, 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 to his hand. Yes, Lord. God's a changing hand. Oh, build your hopes for things eternal. Everybody ought to hold yeah. to God's unchanging hand. Come on, let's do it again. God's unchanging hand. Everybody on a hold to His hand. God's unchanging hand. God's unchanging hand. Oh, build your heart for things eternal. Everybody on a hold yeah. to God's unchanging hand. Come on, we gonna sing the verse. Time is filled. Time is filled with swift transition. Say my mind is made up. Oh, and I'm on my way. way up. Yes, and I got my head up. Going on. Going on with Come on. Lord. Look to your neighbor and say, My mind, my mind is made up. Come on, look to your neighbor. Come on. I'm on my way. Lead you, let Jesus lead you all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Yes, Lord, to glory. Yes, Lord, let Jesus lead you all the way, all the way. Let Jesus, let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead. to somebody and say, say, he's a mighty good leader. He's a mighty good leader. He's a mighty good leader. All the way. All the way. All the way. From earth to glory. Let Jesus lead you. All the way. Come on. Say, he's a mighty good leader. Oh! 
Pastor here at Turner Chapel, and I'm coming firstly with some announcements and uh, some welcome, and uh, we will have an opportunity to share even more with each other on this morning. So, firstly, for announcements, just want to remind everyone that on uh, this Wednesday, we will have our Wednesday night service, which is a night of uh, manifestation and impartation, and this week we have preaching for us, none other than the presiding elder. Uh, presiding Elder Tony Beelan Ingram, who will be here on this Wednesday, 7 o'clock. It will be in the chapel. Uh, those who are unable to make it and or not going to be here in person, you can catch it live uh, via Facebook or YouTube. So we're excited about having her. She will be fresh off. Uh, she's in Liberia, coming back a little bit earlier. So uh, she will be straight uh, from Liberia and coming in and preaching to us on that day. Amen. Amen. Also want to remind everyone that on this week, starting on Friday, we have our Financial Empowerment Conference 2023. Yes. Building wealth across generations. Uh, they will start with a game night, which will be Friday night, March 3rd. Uh, and then they'll have the full conference services on uh, conference activities on Saturday. Uh, where they will have the in-person and hybrid. Uh, so you can watch uh, online if you need to, but please go online to register so that they'll know that you are there. It is free, but they would like to make sure that they got some registration so they'll know who all will be streaming, how many people will be in-house or in the place on that day. So again, it's this Friday, March 3rd. Uh, you can see it. I think it starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, Friday, March 3rd, and then Saturday, March 4th. So please go out 
Uh, if you have any further questions, I'm sure one of the members of the Financial Empowerment Conference Series will be out in the lobby at the table for you there. Amen, amen, and amen. This is the opportunity or the time that we take to welcome our visitors. We are thankful. Um, I, I know that uh, you know that Pastor is still in Liberia. He's uh, doing the conference activities and uh, enjoying his time in his homeland. It's so awesome to have our first lady with us on this morning. At this time, what we would like to do is we would like to extend the welcome on behalf of our pastor and servant leader, Reverend Dr. Tayue Richard Allen Bright and our first lady, Lady Rita Bright, for those who are visiting for the first time. So if you're in the house and you're visiting for the first time, uh, please just lift your hand. Just lift your hand so that we can see you. Amen. We see you over there. Uh, we have two ways in which you can actually register with us. Our ushers will come over with a card. We also have a QR code that you can actually scan where you can electronically go ahead and let us know that you are present and we will reach back out to you just to uh, contact you and let you know how welcome we, uh, how um, thankful we are to have you with us on this morning. So we just want you to know that Turner Chapel is a church where we are all about love. We're about loving God. We're about loving God's word. We're about loving each other. And we are about loving our community. So if you're visiting and you want to join, we welcome you. If you are visiting and you want to come back two, three, four more times, we say, okay, come on back two, three, four more times. But on that fourth time, go ahead and join us, join us, join us. We would love to have you. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to take just a moment uh, for all of us to welcome those who are visiting and greet those who you may not have seen for a while. So we'll have a brief moment of fellowship. Amen. back into your seats. At this time, uh, we'll love, allow the ushers opportunity to let those who are visiting or those who are coming in to come in. Amen. Amen. And as you are still going to your seat, I actually saw a smiling face over there. Is that Robin Washington? Robin is staying with you this morning. Stand and Robin, you all stand up. 
Hey, I wanted to make sure, last week we talked about the couples uh, that got recognized for their 30 years of Pearl Love. Stan and Robin Washington are the leaders of our Keeping the Covenant Connected uh, Connection Ministries. So I just wanted to make sure that I had the opportunity to recognize them since they were not able to be in church on last Sunday. God bless you. Thank you. I had somebody come in my office this week and say, where in the world do y'all get those flowers from the Garden of Eden? because they're still living and they keep going. So, so we're thankful uh, for you all. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Now, we have a special announcement from our Stuart Pro team who will be coming up. Brother Kevin Tobert. Amen. Good morning, Turner family. Uh, we know February is the month that we place high emphasis on our heritage, and our black history, but it is also the birth month of our servant leader. And, and, and we know he's traveling, he's in Africa attending the Global uh, Development Conference, but we also want to make sure that we recognize his birthday, which was this past Friday. So I, I need your help to make sure that he can hear you Wish him a happy birthday. So on the count of three, I need everyone to go really deep and say happy birthday, Pastor Bright. Are we, are we ready? Okay, one, two, three. Happy birthday, Pastor Bright. And guess what? First Lady's birthday is on Tuesday. And Pastor wanted to make sure she was recognized from this pulpit. And so on behalf of Pastor Bright to his lovely wife, Reverend Lynn is presenting her So happy birthday Pastor Bright Happy birthday First Lady We love you We thank you We pray God's blessings upon you Okay, and anyone else celebrating birthdays in the month of February? Please stand, just stand quickly. <laughs> Father of High, we come thanking you for these individuals who you've blessed with another year. Continue to touch them, continue to strengthen them, and continue to guide them, Lord, is our prayer. It's in your wonderful, magnificent Son, Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Kevin, for uh, that. And we thank you, and God bless you. And uh, again, special happy birthdays to our pastor and our first lady. Amen. It is time for the ministry of giving. <laughs> This is a time that we uh, have the opportunity to give back to God that which he has blessed us with. Give just a portion. He doesn't even ask for the whole thing. God says, you know what, you know, you, I have blessed you. You have worked hard. I'm, I know it all belongs to me, but you can keep 90% of it. It's mine, but you can keep this. But this other portion, I just ask that you give it back. Show honor, just show thanks to the work that uh, for all that I have done to you. We're going to use it to build the kingdom. We're going to use it to build ministries. We're going to use it to bless the community. We're going to use it to go forth. Uh, we're going to use it to promote the gospel. We're going to use but please, just, just, just listen to what I'm asking. 
That's all that's being asked. Not from me, but from God. So, this is the time that we take that portion and we give back unto God that we place it in this offering and that we place it in God's hands to be used for his kingdom work. We have four ways that you can give. You can give via Cash App. You can give via our text to give. Uh, you can give online or you can just mail in your check of money order. Those who are in the house, if you have your envelope, all you have to do is just raise that envelope up uh, and one of our ushers will come around and you can just drop your offering in the basket at that time. This is the opportunity that we show God the love and show him what type of stewards we are going to be over all of those things that he has blessed us with. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us. God, we ask that you continue to watch over, you continue to keep, you continue to bless. Now, God, allow these monies that are collected to go forth uh, to promote, to do your kingdom work, to do the work that you have called us to do. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Thank you for those who have been giving cheerfully, those who have been giving freely, those who have been giving sacrificially during this time. And God, we ask that you bless them and you honor them and you favor them all the more. So God, we thank you now for this opportunity that we have. It's in the wonderful, magnificent name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. We'll have a little giving music while those will pass out those cards. Ushers are coming around. preachers that we have on our staff. On this morning, we have another preacher that will be coming to us this morning, none other than the Reverend Edwina Graham. Amen. She is our membership purpose leader, our membership area leader, and we are so pleased to have her come up on this morning. Please continue to keep her lifted up in prayer. Uh, she needs no formal introduction. She is one of us and been one of us for a long time, so we thank God for her as she prepares. Um, so there are a couple of things that we have to do, but after that sermonic selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of the Reverend Edwina Graham, uh, our preacher for this hour. Amen. Now, on the fourth Sunday is one of the things that Pastor has uh, ensured and said that he wants to make sure happens is he wants to make sure that uh, we have the opportunity to highlight those things that are going on in our Gap Youth Ministry. I know many of you remember when we would have a full fourth Sunday. Well, now, uh, right now, what we have is a moment for them to uh, have the opportunity to share 
what it is that's going on, share what is coming up, and celebrate some of our youth. So I'm going to ask that you just put your hands together for our youth pastor, Minister Wayne, and for those members of the Gap Ministry that are coming up right now. We have a uh, very, you'll, you'll see what all is coming up right now, so we'll turn it over now to Minister Wayne and the Gap Youth check, Ministry. Check. God bless you. Check. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. I'm sorry, Wayne. No, you good. There, 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 are, there are a few people that are still sitting that see all these youth, and they're still sitting. If oh, you are yeah. able, I'm just going to ask you to stand to celebrate these Come on youth, now. celebrate these kids, celebrate these that are working, celebrate these adult leaders that yeah. are working with them. Look at them coming up there. God bless Woo. you all. Amen. 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 I used to think I was going to be a rapper. Reverend Don just kind of, you know, put back in my spirit. So that's good right there. Amen, y'all. Y'all give it up again for the youth. G-A-P. G-A-P. If you don't know what G-A-P is, Generation Activated with a Purpose. Amen. Y'all can have a seat. Um, and I am, as he already said, a youth pastor Wayne. Also, uh, I go by YP Wayne. You know, when you work with youth, you got to, you know, abbreviate and, you know, try like little Wayne, you know. But YP Wayne. So, if you, if you see on social media, say YP Wayne, they're like, what is that? Youth Pastor Wayne. Okay. All right. Let's make sure you guys are with me. Now, real quick, I got a few announcements because I want uh, them to present uh, and what they have to do with their recognition this morning. Uh, Knowledge Keepers Ministry. Uh, thank you, Sabrina um, Brinson, for um, having the team to go out to our partnering school, Lockheed Elementary. They were able to uh, do a presentation to fifth graders for Black History Month. Amen. Y'all know how what's going on in the climate about black, you know. So, so they allowed us to come and share a black. Come on, y'all give it up. Give a black history moment for them. So thank you, Knowledge Keepers, for uh, being a part and doing that. And I also will be sharing some um, Black History Moments f with our other uh, partner, Kitty College. So, or for the pre-K class, on tomorrow. And we have, um, I want to real quick, my brother, come up here. Run, 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 run. And uh, I just, I don't think I did this publicly. We, we, we made the announcement in f official board and just different things. But do y'all know who this is? N not really, right? Y'all going to know who he is. This is Chavez Kennedy. Chavez Kennedy has, is, was one of our youth, uh, you know, last year, graduate last year. He goes to Clark, Atlanta as of right now, so he's no longer a youth. Yeah, y'all give it up, give it up. But you guys, I, I know I got, like, limited time, but I want y'all to just, you know, give a good praise to God because Chavez reached back out to me and said, hey, you know, God called him to lead over the reflections of him in unspoken presence, my ministry. So, so oh, come y'all could do better than that. You know, you know, while in school, I, 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 you know what I told him? I said, I don't argue with the Lord. <laughs> I don't argue with the Lord. So thank you, uh, Brother Chavez, for stepping up um, and being a part of uh, the leadership here. Amen. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Real quick, March 3rd, I'm taking out some of the seniors to uh, Atlanta Hawks game, March 3rd. So, um, you know, yep, yep, yep. Mar I know some parents didn't sign their, peer their kids up on purpose because it's Hawks, but I'm coming for y'all, <laughs> you know, haters. Uh, but, yeah, so we, we, we're going to go celebrate with uh, seniors just to, you know, see where they are, where the headspace is, amen. And uh, we're going to have a good time. So we looking forward to that. I am looking forward to that. Um, quick plug, Sunday school, Sunday school. Somebody say Sunday school. All right, Sunday school, it, it's, it's been happening. It's for, for the ki uh, kindergarten to second grade uh, for Miss Lisa, Miss Gaither. Y'all give it up for them. They've been doing a wonderful job. I just want a quick plug. If you have a kindergarten, if you have a second grader, make sure they come to Sunday school. It starts at 8.30, 8.30, amen, 8.30. And then we also... Third grade to fifth grade, Miss Galette, Miss Rhonda, Miss Gloria, they've been, they've been rocking, they, all, both of them have been rocking through the whole pandemic, and they still going, amen? So third grader, fourth grader, fifth grader, Sunday school, starting at what time? Amen, amen. All right, check, check, check. And then look, we have, oh, this is the, the last check. We have a presentation from, for, from our Boys and Girls Scout Ministry. Y'all see how deep they are? Ooh. Ooh, let me get out the way. All right, y'all come on, present.
Good morning, Turner Chapel. Uh, my name is Kelly Watson, and I, along with some of these other young women on stage, are have the pleasure of leading Turner Chapel's Girl Scout Troop 8107. If, thank you. If you did not know, um, we service girls ages kindergarten through seniors in high school, and we are one of Marietta's largest, if not the largest, troop in this area. So this morning, we want to take just a few minutes of your time to recognize two of our Girl Scouts who have earned the high award of Gold Award. This is the highest achievement that a Girl Scout can earn. It's not easy. It's a project that they put into place that is intended to make the community and the world a better place. Um, it takes dedication, countless hours, and the will to see it through to the end. So our first recipient is Brooke King. Brooke's project was called Tennis Time, and it addressed the issue of childhood obesity by providing a series of fun, free clinics for local youth designed to show them how to stay fit through tennis. On top of earning her gold award, Brooke has also been awarded one of the 2023 Gold Award Council Scholarships in the amount of $3,000. And this comes from Girl Scouts of Greater Atlanta. Our second recipient is Lindsay Lavlinay. <laughs> Lindsay's project was activity boxes for seniors and was designed to encourage senior citizens in the community to stay physically and mentally active during the COVID-19 pandemic. Lindsay and her team were able to collect and donate over 200 items for a local senior center, which included card and board games, puzzles, magazines, cleaning supplies, socks, and more. Congratulations, Lindsay. Thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity to highlight the achievements of our scouts. We appreciate your support, and if you would like to continue to support, we are selling cookies after service. Good morning, good morning. I have the distinguished honor of um, awarding or presenting the award for the highest achievement in Boy Scouts. Uh, on behalf of our our leader, fearless leader, Mr. Gallette, and I'm standing in the gap for our uh, scoutmaster, Mr. Willis. Um, if you don't know, scouting started, Boy Scouts started about 110 years ago. And in those 110 years, about 130 million boys have passed through scouting. Out of that 130 million scouts, only about 5% of them reach this achievement, 5%. Out of that 5%, less than 9% of that 5% are African Americans. So that kind of tells you the achievement of, of, of this award. And so that's roughly about one in 1,000 scouts um, an African American achieved this award. So our award today is going to Yuri Bird, who is, who is our ninth Eagle Scout for Troop 312. Uh, just real quick, his journey consisted of achieving multiple merit badges. He's achieved over 24 merit badges, which is min in dis many different disciplines from first day to cooking to camping to environmental science and a whole bunch of things. Also part of his achievement, he had to uh, conduct a Eagle Scout project. And he did a, his project consisted of a teen boys clothing drive where he collected over 500 items, which consisted of shirts, shoes, uh, pants, different socks, underwear, things like that. And he, he actually dedicated, uh, uh, awarded and gave those items to our own uh, Kenneth and Cassandra Marcus Mission House. Uh, so he achieved that. So, 
The Boy Scouts of America is proud to award the rank of Eagle Scout to Yuri Kenneth Bird, Troop 312 of Marietta, where we are the first, and I believe the only, African-American troop in Cobb County in recognition of successful completion of all requirements for scouting's highest rank. Scout, thank you. Why they doing the picture? You guys, just do, just give them another round of applause. This is Black History right now, amen. I know we highlight past, and that's all good. We should, right? But we're gonna represent for the present, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, thank you all. Um, you, you guys can stand if you stay. Well, you guys can go. It's up to y'all. Oh, oh, take a picture. Sorry, let's do a picture. With Amen. Amen. Yeah, they're going to take a picture. You're not going to get me in the picture. I can keep going. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, real quick, guys. Um, last, last message. Uh, I want y'all real quick, whisper to, whisper to one of your neighbor, 10 can promises. Come on, whisper, whisper, 10 can promises. Whisper, I, I need to hear a whisper. I know we, you know, whispering is low, right? 10 can promises, 10 can promises. Ask me, what's that? Say it louder. Ask me, what's that? Okay, 10 can promises. I'm so glad you asked. Amen. So, 10 can promises is... Our spring production, the name of our spring production this year, it's the comeback year, amen? We, you guys got to be excited about that. We, we were used to having a spring production and something just, you know, put it on pause for a second. Now we push and play, amen? And so let me throw the dates out to you. So if you haven't put it in your calendar, you need to do so right now, right now. March 25th uh, and March 26th, these are the dates. On March 25th, we have two uh, shows that will be at 2. One is at 2, and another one is at 7 p.m., 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. And on the 26th, there you go, to, on the 26th Sunday, they'll be at 3 p.m. And Tin Can Promises says, when life happens and you are at the end of your rope, what do you do? What do you do? I heard somebody say, how mercy. Amen. So we want you to make sure you guys support uh, um, the worship arts ministry in this um, production. And if you're trying to get tickets, trying to, trying to get tickets, go on to the uh, online on the site, website. You can purchase tickets through there. And also you see your worship arts ministry leaders. They will have tickets for sale. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's get a little bit more excited. It, it, youth are in there, you know. We always got to do, we got to do what we do for the youth. Now, last um, announcement I have, I have uh, Sister Alexis Ezel. She's going to present, uh, well, you'll see. Amen. Easter Day is on the way. Please help us. Good morning. So starting on March 31st, we challenge you to fill the Easter bins with money, summer kids clothing at our bin locations. Find a bin, place your donations, and take a selfie using the hashtag JesusLovesMe as we, pre as we prepare an Easter event that will bless our community. So today to kick off our Easter donations, we have an egg hunt. So right now what I need you to do, I want you to look under the tray in front of you where your envelopes, um, your Bibles and communions can be found for a special egg. If you have this special egg, please stand so that we can give you a prize. <laughs> okay, so we got an egg over here. We got an egg up here. And so I have some people coming around. 
You have one right here. <laughs> and you have one over there. <laughs> Miss Jeanette. <laughs> Here, right there. <laughs> okay, did we miss anybody? We got everybody. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, everybody got an egg. Okay, well, thank you all for participating. Thank you in advance for your Easter donations and let the donations begin. Thank you. Ready? Thank you so much. God bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Y'all got excited about it. I saw people getting up from back there, running down front, looking for eggs. <laughs> Ain't not on my row. Uh, <laughs> amen. God bless you. Uh, I, I, I was remiss. I didn't have us pray for our preacher before, right after the introduction. So all I want you to do now is stretch your hands out to the preacher. And let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this preacher. Cover her, God, from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet. Give her the power to preach the word that you have given her. Inspire her, encourage her, edify her, motivate her, allow her to be bold in the proclamation which you have given. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Change me, change me, God. I need you to change me, change me. 
Would you change my heart? Change me. Would you change, change, change my mind? Change me. Look at your life. Look at your life. Change me. Ask God to change your life. Change me. Can I hear you all over the building? Let me hear everybody here. Change. Yeah. you know it has come yes Lord. Ooh, we thank you God
Hallelujah and glory to God. A wonderful change has come over each and every one of us because we belong to God. Why don't you give God some praise this morning? First, giving honor to God, who is indeed the head of my life. I give thanks and honor to my pastor in his absence for this opportunity, the Reverend Tayue Richard Allen Bright. Thank you, Pastor. I thank you, Reverend Don, for the call. Thank you, First Lady. And I thank Turner Chapel. I do not take it lightly standing in this sacred place. God has been so good. God has kept us three years. Well, he's kept us longer. But during a pandemic up until this very point, we are yet alive. Give God some praise. I'm going to tell you just quickly, and I know time has uh, been given, and as everything was going on, I said I could come up here, read the scripture, and say amen, because we've already been blessed. But God gives me always a subject before he gives me the message. Then I have to say, God, well, you've got to give me some more to tell me what's going on. But let me read the scripture, and it can be found in John, beginning with the 11th chapter, and I'll be reading several verses, verses 1 through 4, then 13 through 14, 17, 21 through 22. I'm reading from the New International Version, and it reads as follows. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Jesus had been speaking of his death but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. Verse 14, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Verse 17, on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. Verse 20, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Verse 21, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, 22, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. And from this scripture passage, the subject this morning is the weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, of the weight, W-A-I-T, the weight of the weight. Let us pray. Gracious God, I come this morning, oh God, just asking you to step in, oh God, and just show your glory. Take full control, oh God. 
There have been many prayers given on my behalf this past week, oh God, and I am expecting the Holy Spirit to come. And just like Aria, that precious Aria said, please help me, Lord, please help me. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Now I know, let's set this up for you this morning. Somewhere in the city of Bethany, just two miles from Jerusalem, there is a man named Lazarus who is a beloved friend of Jesus. Jesus, however, is in Jerusalem doing his work of gathering his sheep because he is about his father's business and he is the good shepherd. Lazarus is the brother of Mary and Martha, and they all live together in Bethany. I'm sure you remember that Mary was the one who poured costly perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. This family was close to Jesus, even inviting him to dinner. He was very comfortable, and he was connected with this family. However, even though their closeness with Jesus still did not exempt them from the troubles of this world. Something strange happens, saints, in this text. Lazarus becomes very ill. Lazarus is sick and needs a doctor for healing. The sisters knew the power of Dr. Jesus. So they sent a message to Jesus telling him that his very good friend Lazarus the one he loves is very, very sick. Something even stranger happens. They expected Jesus to come immediately to see about his friend. You know, when you got a good friend, you can call and they'll be there. They'll show up even when you don't ask them to come. They even know the sound of your voice, whether there's something going wrong. They expected him to come see about him. The one that loveth is sick. Not just the one that loves you, but the one you love is sick. Now Jesus says something strange. But when Jesus heard about it, he said to his disciples, this sickness will not end in death. It is for God's glory so that I, the Son of God, will be glorified through this situation. Now, how many of us have called on the name of Jesus and want him to come? We want him to answer even before we end our prayer with amen. I know I'm not a, anybody wanting him to come right now. I need you now. Now you have an idea of how Martha and Mary are feeling at the time of their request. They wanted Jesus right then. Jesus, however, stayed where he was two more days, and they made no move to go see about Lazarus. Now, I know some of you may be thinking like I was, how could Jesus not go quickly and see about his sick friend when he so desperately needs him? Now, one theologian writes that... He believes that Jesus uses this sad event to overview the purpose of his earthly ministry, and that is to foreshadow his death and resurrection power. And while Jesus is going to use this as foreshadow, it still doesn't stop what is about to happen. Sometimes, saints, things have to happen. You know, we wonder why things happen. And then when we get to the other side, sometimes we find ourselves telling the Lord, Lord, I would have done that or gone there anyway. But we got to go through the fire. We got to be refined and refinished. And while Jesus is going to use this to make matters worse, Jesus knows what's going to happen, but he does not let Martha and Mary know what the plan is. When it comes 
to waiting, W-A-I-T-I-N-G, the weight gets heavier and heavier. And with Martha and Mary, there is no text messages, no emails, no voicemail, no telephone, and no technology. Well, we have that today. We can do a quick response. You see, there was no response. Before we become too hard on Martha and Mary, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you needed someone to respond or come quickly to help you? But you found yourself waiting and waiting. Now, I know we have friends, good friends, and I've had some who called and couldn't even talk, but I knew it was something I needed to respond to. And my message was, I'm on my way. And that's what we want, and that's what we want from God. But God is working on our behalf, behalf, and he is moving. The waiting most likely causes you to feel weighted down. You can feel weighted down physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Now, I know there's some weight on some folks here in this sanctuary this morning. Some of us are carrying weight. We're smiling. We look good. We act like we good. But some of us are carrying some weight. Some weight is so painful, we can't even open our mouths to say anything about it. Now, we've seen recently or heard of some people, and I'm just going to use the one example, who was weighted down, but no one ever knew. Sir Twitch. Twitch was weighted down. But when you saw Twitch with that big, beautiful smile and dancing all over the place, dancing with his wife, with his children, when he was on Ellen, he was weighted down. But he masked it. He knew that he was weighted. He just didn't share it. So I know that there are some people in here wondering, where is Jesus for my situation? We need him. I need you right now. And feeling like this situation may cause me to die. Not a physical death, but I may lose some things. Waiting can cause deterioration in your attitude, making you feel like you're in total darkness. Now listen, have you ever gone to a doctor appointment and you arrive sometimes 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes early, and you're told to be seated in the waiting room? The waiting starts the moment you sit down. And sometimes you're sitting there well beyond the 30 minutes and you're still waiting. And they might say the doctor will be with you shortly. You're still waiting. There are times when we find ourselves in the waiting room. Thank God for waiting room grace. Most of us don't like to wait. We want what we want when we want it. Now, Martha and Mary are biblical examples of someone who waited desperately for a change to come that would save Lazarus. A clarion call had been made, but day one they waited, day two they waited, day three they waited, and the weight of the weight was heavy. Day three they waited, and day four when Jesus arrived, Lazarus had already been dead for four days. How do we know that Martha and Mary were dealing with the weight the heaviness and the burden of waiting is when they see Jesus. The first thing they say to him, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
How many of you have been in some if-only situations in your life? Is there anyone here today waiting for something, waiting on God? You may be waiting on a good report from a recent diagnosis. You may be waiting for a financial breakthrough. You may be waiting for a job. You may be waiting for a relationship to improve. You may even be waiting for a relationship to begin. You may be waiting to heal from a broken heart, waiting to heal from grief, and all of this feels so very heavy while you're waiting. Let me tell you, saints of God, God ain't heavy. When you wait for God, God is not heavy. You may be walking bent over because you're burdened down. But when you begin to call on the name of Jesus, you don't even have to say anything else. You don't have to tell Jesus all about it because he already knows. Just say the name Jesus. Y'all don't know how many times I called on the name of Jesus last week for today. I say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you to bless. Jesus, I need your work all things out for your good. Jesus, I need to glorify you, oh God. It is not about me, saints of God. It is about my Father in heaven. Thank God this is not how this story ends, and it is not how your story ends. And there is some good news in this text. Let me remind you that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And the record is, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. When we call him, he's right on time. Jesus arrives, and soon after Jesus arrives, Lazarus arrives. Oh, when Jesus arrives in your life, he's coming for you, and you're going to get up, that weight is going to shake, be shaken off, and you're going to know that it's God who is moving you, who is changing things. Now, Martha and Mary found that there are some benefits of waiting. I don't know if you knew it, but there are benefits of waiting on God, and the same can apply to you today. First, it helps us develop uh, perseverance and endurance. God will meet us where we are. And it levels our playing field when God meets us where we are. It helps us to develop patience when we're waiting. God grows us and shows us how to trust him and walk in his ways. When we have to wait on God, we have to put our total trust in him. It helps us develop our spiritual capacity, our spiritual strength. It helps you to hear God's voice clearly and get your errands, your tasks from him, your charge from the Lord. Because some of us are running around doing everything but what God told us to do. And we got to listen to God. And that'll take some of that weight off of you when you go to God and say, God, do I do this or do I do that? And unless God says yes, then don't do it. And what happens to in this spiritual capacity? We'll begin to talk to ourselves rather than listening to ourselves. Because we'll hear ourselves saying, God, you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all. God, I trust you. God, I love you. God, you said that I can cast every care on you. God, you said that you will be a lawyer in the courtroom. God, you said that you will take care of me. Start talking to yourself about the Word of God. And then this waiting, a benefit, is the realization of God's sovereignty, his absolute power in all things. How many of you know that God has power in everything? 
everything. There's nothing too hard for God, nothing. Now, there are some things we have to do while we're waiting. Okay, you may need to write these down. You need to pray while waiting. You can't just sit there. Pray while waiting. Romans 12 and 12 reminds us, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. And then number two, we are to wait patiently. Romans 8 and 25 says, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Waiting has purpose. It grows you in the knowledge of God and his commands, his laws. Waiting causes us to have thankfulness and gratitude that you're in God's waiting room while you begin to examine yourself. Now, God promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So he's in the waiting room with us. So sometimes he's saying, examine yourself. Now, here are some questions. Lord, is there anything you want to show me about me? Lord, can I love you more deeply? Lord, can I bring you glory in this situation? Lord, is there something I need to change in my life? How, Lord, can I use this situation to help or bless someone else? Saints, worship while you wait. God is waiting for you because he is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshiped. And you can pray while you worship. Worship in song. Worship in dance. Just worship the Lord. It helps our priorities become clearer, that we are to trust God. We are to be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. While there, don't, remit, don't forget to pray, to fast, because some things only come by fasting and praying. Sometimes we got to fight through the help of God's strength and totally trust God. Now worship God for who he is, not for what he does. Worship him just because he's God. When you worship, God goes to work. God is never inactive when you are worshiping. God is never inactive when you are worshiping. He's working a plan, a purpose, and he's refining you. You know in the scripture in Jeremiah 29 and 11 where he says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now there is some good news to be gleaned from the death of Lazarus and his sisters waiting on him. God will get you through what feels like a heavy load because when we pray while we're waiting, worship while waiting, the load is lightened. It is lifted. Isaiah 43, 2c reminds us that when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. God is guiding you. God is growing you, and God is grooming you for the plans he has for you. He determines when he performs the manifestation of promises in your life. He determines that. Now, waiting is the connection between prayer and praise. If you wait on Jesus, he will show up. And when Jesus shows up, he will speak up. And he will call your name. Just like he said, Lazarus, come forth. Now insert your name right here. Edwina, come forth. Insert your name. He'll show up and call your name. In my sanctified imagination this morning, I see Jesus standing on the outside of Jesus' grave. And I hear Jesus saying, come forth. Come forth. I hear him call him out. 
Do you hear him calling your name this morning from any situations that you might be in? You can be resurrected. You can rise up from any situation that seems dead because of God's powerful work. Now, some of you are looking at me strangely, but I'm going to give you some biblical testimonies of good news of those who waited on Jesus. Abraham waited for a promise to be filled. Joseph waited in prison for a purpose. Moses waited 40 years to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Job waited through suffering with his steadfastness in trusting God. David waited to be a king at the appointed time through his faithfulness to God. Daniel waited for a breakthrough in prayer. Sarah waited for 25 years for her appointed child. Rebecca waited 20 years to give birth to Jacob and Esau. Jesus waited to begin his ministry. Jesus waited until he was 30 years old to begin his ministry. I tell you, saints of God, the weight isn't heavy when you're waiting with God. He is your refuge. He is your strength. He is your strong tower. He is your prince of peace. He is your comforter. He is your Jehovah Shalom. He is your lawyer in a courtroom. He's your bridge over troubled waters. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's your divine intervention. Wait, I say, wait on the Lord. Oh, my God. He's your healer. He's Jehovah Rapha. He is your provider, Jehovah Jireh, and he's El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty. Whew. I want to share with you a, a short story, and you may have already heard this, and I may have embellished it a little bit, so I'm going to put that out there right now. I want to share with you about a small town country preacher who had a very small church, but he was a very good preacher. He had brought many lives to Christ in his pastoring. He received an invitation to the big city, to the big mega church, to pray on a program. Before it was time to pray, one of the leaders approached him and whispered to him, please try not to mispronounce words so that the congregation can understand you because we don't talk like you. Well, the country preacher, with confidence, looked at this gentleman, and he said, that's okay, because I'm not talking to you anyway. <laughs> he was talking to God. His prayers were being spoken to God. If you don't understand me, God does. God knows everything, even before we say it, saints of God. He can hear even when you utter, even when you moan, God knows what you need. Talk to God. The lesson here is when you're waited and waiting, talk to God. Now, you know the scripture, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Saints of God, I don't mind waiting. That's, that's the weight on the Lord that you can cast your cares, your burdens. They that wait on the Lord. Saints, this morning, I want you to know that the weight of the weight will be lighter when you pray, when you worship, when you trust, when you give it to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Let me see your hands. I don't mind waiting on God. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! I 
I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. Come on, do it again. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Now, there may be somebody here who has felt weighted down. There might be someone here that needs the Lord, someone who hasn't given their life to Christ. But I tell you this morning, if you come and you surrender unto the Lord and give your life to him, that heavy load will be with, lifted. Or there may be someone here who has been disconnected. They know the Lord, but they're disconnected. This is your opportunity. Or there's someone who may need to join in fellowship with us. Because in fellowship, we are able to support one another. So right now, those of you that are here, if you are wanting to make a decision, any one of those, Please come, won't you join? And those online, if you want to join, please indicate that. I in don't the chat. mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Amen. Amen. With all of us standing, uh, let us prepare for our benediction. Uh, let me check First Lady, anything? Brother Kevin, nothing. Amen. So let us prepare this time for the benediction as um, our preacher and the first lady uh, will be exiting uh, shortly. To him who is able to keep you from falling and prevent you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. May you be with us, be with each and every one of us as we wait, as we wait, as we wait. Lord, we love you, we thank you. Peace be unto each and every one, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say, 
Amen. Change.